Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're looking at Addictive Drums 2 and what we're going to be doing is taking MIDI out of Reaper into Addictive Drums using its great transform functions and then bringing it back into Reaper. Here's a MIDI pattern that I programmed in in Reaper. The velocity is all 127. There's no dynamics here. Here's how it sounds. It's okay, but there's no feel at all. There's no variations in velocity, no variations in timing. We can actually fix that inside of Addictive Drums. One of my favorite features of Addictive Drums too, and so I'm excited to show it to you today. Switch over to the Beats section, and inside of this left column, going to the Library and choosing External MIDI. This is going to be blank to start off with because we haven't brought any MIDI files into it. There's a specific folder that Addictive Drums can look in to get your external MIDI, so we just have to open that up. To do that, we're going to click on the question mark and go to Open External MIDI Folder. That brings it up in Explorer or Finder, and from here we can drag and drop an item from Reaper's Arrange View into this folder. So the key command you need to remember for this is Command Option on the Mac, or Control Alt on a PC. So you're going to hold down Command and Alt, and drag it until the icon changes. On my system, that's what a MIDI uh, file will look like. On your system, maybe a little different. We're just going to Command Tab or Alt Tab to get back to the uh, Explorer window and drop it in. And there we go. So there's our Addictive Drums 2 Untitled MIDI Item Render 001. Now, it doesn't show up here automatically. We do need to refresh that folder. So once again, in Addictive Drums, click the question mark and then refresh MIDI library. So that's going to scan everywhere where it knows to get MIDI files, and it's going to find that new one for us. Click that to um, enable it. Down here is where it's going to play the pattern. Uh, but when we switch over to the Transform tab right here and enable Transforming, then uh, we can actually manipulate this. All right, so if we just hit play, it's going to play exactly how it was recorded, 127 for all the velocities. So first thing we can do for transforming is open up the kit piece, mix and reassign section. And this can do a lot of things, but what we're going to focus on is just scaling the velocities down. So the hi-hat we can make a little less intense and you can see these are the hi-hats here. We're going to scale those down. We're going to bring our snare down slightly and the toms down slightly. All right, so let's hear that now. Now this is different than going to the effects page and turning down the hi-hat here, because turning this down turns down the audio output, but turning it down here changes the velocity, so it's actually playing different samples. We haven't added any dynamics to this yet other than between different kit pieces. So now they're not all at 127, they're probably going from like 60% up to 127. Let's add some randomness in the random section here. Add a bit of timing variation. Not a lot, but just a little. 20% and velocity will put in about 20% as well. So now each consecutive hit is not going to be the same velocity. It's going to mix that up a bit. That's our before. And in this velocity section here, we can scale back the overall volume of everything. So we can compress it. If our starting point is something with a lot of variety in the velocity, we can actually expand it to separate uh, the notes, separate the dynamics, more, the velocities even more. 
Um, and once we choose kind of our, our range of velocity, we can bring it up or down. We can also change the kit pieces right inside this. So instead of having to go into the MIDI editor, choose a different MIDI note for, um, for a particular hit, we can actually kind of reassign it right here. So think about the hi-hat. It's playing like an open hat, but we can change this to a different type of open hat. So open A. Open B. D. You can change it to a ride. And there's also some variations for accents. Uh, eighth notes, we can choose the off beats, having the accent, or harder. Uh, on beats and same with the 16th note so we can I don't know if you can see this but there's actually kind of a, a waveform that changes based on this pattern so let's play around with that a little bit So when we're happy with this, all we have to do is click on the name of the MIDI item that we're editing here, and click and drag, bring it into Reaper. And so here on the left, this is the original, 127 for all the velocities. And this one is ranging from 70, there's some 80s, there's a couple that are still at 127 for the kick. And, uh, and yeah, that's our edited version. So there you go. I've shown you how to get MIDI outside of Reaper into a actual file on the hard drive. You've seen the external MIDI folder for Addictive Drums. You've seen how to find that inside of Addictive Drums and how to use the transform section. And then finally, bringing it back into Reaper to continue working on your song. So that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.